Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Megs, and if you are new here, good to see you, nice to meet you. And if you are returning, welcome back, good to see you again. Um, so today I am going to do a video that uh, I was watching Nikki Raven do, and I think she took it from someone else as well. But it is like the best and worst palette from, um, from, well, I'm going to primarily focus on indie kind of brands and some of them may be, you know, controversial as being an indie or not, but I look at it as they're not being owned by, uh, like, Estee Lauder or a Shiseido or LV, um, H, like the Louis Vuitton, uh, kind of company and so forth. That's how I kind of run it, but they might be in the drugstore and they might be quite a, a bigger name. And I still kind of consider those indie, so let's just preface with that. I also am looking at my collection of palettes that have, I think, four more in um, in that particular brand. Like, I do have items from, like, let's say, Kaleidos, which only have three palettes, and I don't really think that's necessarily fair to judge, you know, one best, one worst. And again, the worst is kind of like relative. If I don't like a palette, I will generally, you know, pass it along or what have you, I definitely won't keep it in my collection. So worst is a relative, which for me means more, I'm not picking up as much as say as I do, or I do with other palettes. That's how I'm kind of looking at it, but, so just so you guys know, um, yeah. And that's how I'm kind of approaching it. So let's get started. I want to first start with uh, ABH, and I know a lot of people are like, are they still indie? And like, I'm pretty sure they are. I don't think they're owned by a bigger brand. Maybe Estee Lauder owns them, but I, I'm not unaware. If you let me know down below, please let me do. Let me know. Um, so I had a little bit of a hard time deciding between this because I don't reach for ABH a lot anyway, but uh, when I do, there are a couple of palettes which I reach for generally a little bit more. I had a troubles between the best palette because there's two palettes that I really quite enjoy, but I think for overall, the one that I reach for the most would be the Sultry palette out of all the ones I have. I do own like the Subculture, the new version of Subculture, uh, Prism palette. Those two I really like as well, as well as Modern Renaissance, Soft Glam, and um, as I like Sultry. Um, yes, so I feel like Sultry, uh, for me, uh, when terming in terms of use and um, like the colors, overall colors that I like, uh, I would have to say this one, um, just because I do find it's more of a cooler type tone. It's got some really interesting uh, colors in here, like Rose Quartz, Steampunk are really, really pretty. Uh, Cyborg is really cool. Like, honestly, all overall, I really enjoy this. I mean, it's a very basic kind of palette, uh, but I do enjoy it, and I do reach for this probably the most out of all of them. While I do find the color story to say subculture more towards what I really, really like, um, I don't use it as often, um, and sometimes the colors can be a little tricky to play with. Uh, and Prism's also a neat one too, but again, it's just like a couple of colors there that I really, really enjoy. Um, yeah, Modern Renaissance had its day. I don't reach for it all that often either, but there's another one that I don't, I really don't reach for. And, and that's gonna be the Soft Glam. I know, kind of shocking, kind of surprising, but again, it's a similar vein as the Sultry, but this one has a little bit more of a warmer tones to it. Again, very kind of a basic type palette, but I would have to say out of all of them, I just, I don't, I don't reach for this. Now, it could be the fact that there are multiple shades in here that are repeats. For instance, Noir is a repeat, uh, Cypress Umber is a repeat, uh, I wanna say Burnt Orange is a repeat, Orange Soda, uh, you can find in singles. And I'm sure, I think there's some other ones here. Tempera, I believe also is a, a repeat. Um, and that's fine, but again, if I'm finding it in the, sh in the palettes that I'm using more often, um, then I'm probably not going to use this as often as the other ones. I don't know. I don't know if that logic makes sense, but it makes sense to me and that's what counts. So yeah, I'd say this is for me the worst palette. Again, it's not because of formulation. It's not because of the color strain. It's just I'm not reaching for it. You're going to find that a common theme. Okay, next one I'm going to go with the best one that I have in my collection for ColourPop. And I will say say that this, again, was a little bit of a toss-up between this one and the Baroque palette, but at first, Forest Sight by uh, the 
Raw Beauty Christie collaboration. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful type palette. Again, I, I do feel like this is a very similar color story to the subculture. Uh, maybe not an exact dupe, but a very similar vibe and feel. I really love these kind of dark matte type um, jewel rich tone mattes. I love the depth of this. I love the, the again the color story I like that there's more mattes and there are shimmers or there's no pressed glitters whatsoever um, and this really speaks to me a little bit more I like the range in this the other one that I'm going to say that I uh, is the worst from color but is the aha uh -huh honey now when this came out I was really quite excited about it just because you know having an all yellow palette is amazing but if you even like quick glance look at this there's not a lot of um, um, levels of colors in it so it's all very kind of a medium tone there isn't a super light there isn't a super dark it's just like the depth of it is you know lacking and there's a pressed glitter so I will reach for this when I just want kind of an all over yellow eye uh, but even then they're more of a golden more so than like a lemony kind of one um, maybe sweet spot is more lemony but even that is quite warm um, so I'm gonna say out of all of the ColourPop ones I have which I know to be fair I don't have a crazy amount of ColourPop but ones I do I'm gonna say this is kind of like the worst one that I own okay Let's move on to BH. BH is a relatively new um, company to my collection and one that I'm actually quite excited for because there are quite a few palettes that I am actually looking to purchase. Uh, Sweet Shop, I own three, and then I have the Weekend Brunch series, Blueberry Muffin, as well as Avocado Toast. So I'm gonna say out of all, out of those five, I'm going to go with Avocado Toast as being probably the best in my collection, just because I generally have more comfort and I really enjoy greens. And this has a beautiful selection of green tones, but as well as neutral tones, so you're not just focusing in on the green. I could have easily picked the pistachio palette if I wanted just a green palette, but I think those are somewhat limiting. Whereas this one has, like I said, you could go with a dark kind of sultry, you could go with a light ones here, which I have, or just like an all over green or neutral. So this gives you a big range of looks as well as a color story I really quite enjoy. Um, yeah, so avocado toast, great. And I picked this over the blueberry muffin because I'm a little bit more comfortable and I enjoy greens more so than I would say blues and those steely grays that are within that particular palette. As for the worst from BH, again, this is very much uh, more of what I'm not reaching for as opposed to being a bad palette or formula. I'm going to have to say this is the cherry on top from the Sweet Shop. I do love the fact that I have a monochromatic red, pinky red, kind of burgundy toned um, palette, which I think is fantastic, especially that it's a really great formula and um, price. But I will say I don't reach for this all that often, especially, you know, on a daily or, you know, if I wanted to wear something to work. This is going to be a very specific look that I'm looking for for that day or vibe or whatever I want. But I would have to say cherry on top. Again, not because of anything other than I'm just not reaching for it. Um, and again, it really is a specific look that I want when I reach for this particular palette. Okay, let's talk about Juvia's Place. I own quite a few Juvia's Place palettes, probably the most palettes I have out of one um, makeup brand. One, because it's an amazing, amazing uh, formula and company, and two, the color stories that they offer are really quite interesting. Um, I am including the six pan palettes within this when I'm talking about Juvia's Place palettes. I own everything from like Wahala 2 to uh, like her, the original ones like the Warrior, Saharan, um, Tribe, uh, what else, the Dusseur, Zulu, everything there as well as the six pan. So I'm going to say the best one is going to be the Tribe palette. Um, this was, this is a fantastic um, palette if you like kind of grungier uh, greens and all that and as I've already mentioned I do enjoy a green look as well as like this has this like like a mustardy khaki kind of color uh, I love these kind of mattes they have beautiful spring hair you can darken it up you can lighten it up and I feel like you can wear this whenever um, this reminds me this and avocado toast are very similar in terms of uh, the way I look at it, uh, but this definitely has more of a grungier kind of aspect to it, which I really enjoy. Uh, I love that a lot. Um, next one I would have to say would be 
the violets. Uh, I do own chocolates and taupes, which you're like, ugh, but taupes is so boring. Yeah, but taupes is one that I can wear on the daily uh, if I want just a soft, natural look going to work or what have you. To me, yes, there's not a lot of depth in the taupes one, um, but I can definitely wear it more often. Whereas this one, violets, while the colors are really, really pretty and I like the look of them, I do find the formulation of these not uh, up to par as the other palettes that I own from Juvia's Place. With that said, I know purples are hard to formulate, but you know, you can say that and give that reasoning for any kind of purple uh, and purple palette if it's not really uh, performing the way you want it to. Um, I do think, I mean, I'm happy that there's this dark, this dark color here, so it adds a little bit of a range and has some depth, but I do find the colors look very similar on, or they're a little patchy, or they're just not, uh, they're just not what I wanted them to be in terms of performance on my on my eye. So, not a horrible palette, but not not their best one as far as I'm concerned. Okay, next would be Natasha Denona. Um, I own a uh, few of I own three minis, one five, and two of the larger size. Um, I will have to say. <laughs> uh, I mean, I know there's the new one out, Circo Loco, I think it is, and it's the 129. I really wish you would have put that um, as, um, I think, an $80 one. I personally would be more apt to purchase it then, but as it is, the 129s are like 170 in Canadian dollars, and I just, I can't. I can't um, buy, so I'm going to look to Rupees and um, uh, Millie's. Uh, videos as for duping um, and try and dupe it myself with what I have uh, just because I can't I can't anyway but that's uh, a tangent <laughs> did I mention I sometimes ramble but anyway uh, the best palette I have from Natasha Denona is going to be her gold palette I absolutely love this I get the most um, the most I guess pleasure <laughs> from using this palette and I really love her mattes in here. I love these two uh, turquoise tealy colors. This kind of color down here, I'm looking at it in person and on the side glance it's looking more of a pinky and then but in here it's goldy green. Like it's it's a really cool multi-dimensional shadow. Um, yes, I know there's three colors here that look pretty much the same um, but honestly I love golds, bronzes, browns, what have you but I really love this palette and I've always loved the looks that come from it. Uh, it's got a good range. Next, uh, I would say the worst from Natasha. This might be controversial but I would have to say the Biba palette. Um, I do not use this palette that often uh, and I'm surprised at even myself with me saying it. This was like a kind of like, oh really Max? I don't use it that often and, a, and it's a neutral basic kind of bitch palette. I do find there's a lot of feeling of similarity and there's not much variety in color in this. Albeit this last row here is more of a cooler tone. These two are more neutral warm kind of tones but I find that when I use these two rows up here there's not a lot of difference on the eyeball. Um, I find Monroe and Shine very similar on my eye. I find like Rayon and Rustic very similar on the eye. These brownish reds like I just don't reach for it again I'm surprised because I love her mattes and maybe I just need to force myself a little more with that so it's it's not that the formula is bad or anything again I'm just not reaching for it given that um you know I love her mini star her mini star palette I love her mini um glam and especially her mini gold palette like those are fantastic but the gold palette is my favorite Okay, last one that I have here, I'm going to talk about Melt. Now, maybe this isn't fair because I know people can't get this one anymore and the people were just like loving this. And this is, I'm going to be talking, my favorite palette from uh, Melt would be the Muerte. Fantastic. I love these jewel tones, deep, moody kind of colors. Really, really beautiful. And the formula, I don't know what they did with this one compared to their other ones. I haven't tried their other press pan um, palettes like in this format. I do have three different um, stacks, like when they first were uh, early on when they came out. Um, but I really, really love this color story. I love the formula of this, and it's just really beautiful. Um, so to me, 
everything from the packaging to the color story to the formula is like perfection within this which is why so many people I think want it um, it's very very coveted and then I would say the worst palette that I have from melt um, is in a stack form so whether or not you want to feel like that it's a palette or not I'm gonna say it is because it all came together I'm gonna say is the gunmetal so this bottom row here this is the she's in party stack um, but this is the gunmetal um, the gunmetal it looks really beautiful when you're looking at it uh, and perhaps you can use it with other palettes but I find because it's all shimmer uh, other than the one here um, there's not much variety you can do with it to be honest with you uh, these two colors are just kind of you have to almost use them separately you can't use them together because you're just they're just almost like two closing their ones leading more blue and one's definitely more of a cuter gunmetal shade there's not much difference on the eye, especially when you don't have a lot of space like I do. You really have to use things strategically. Um, and this, for me, there's just not much there. This one is really beautiful, but it doesn't show up a lot on my skin tone. And then you just are left with this one here, uh, which is a beautiful kind of purpley gray brown type color. Um, I like it. It's fine. Uh, if they ever introduced it into an actual press palette, I would probably forego it, to be honest with you. Uh, but I mean they do have some other palette form, form that I know they're using their stacks and kind of making it into a palette like she's in parties and uh, I think the rust stack I believe um, Gemini is one I would also be interested in trying out a lot of people seem to like that one but I also own the Kaleidos uh, sci-fi green which to me they give me the same kind of vibe but I do like those kind of greens uh, I, as I just mentioned, I do have Kaleidos, but again, I only have three palettes from there. I own the Club Nebula, which is just a new one, and then I also have the Electric Turquoise and the Sci-Fi Green. So I really didn't think it was fair to mention um, my favorite and worst one, because to me, there really isn't. Um, but yeah, so I think that's it um, in terms of my collection. I've got a lot of singles, so maybe that's the reason why I'm not really... Um, I don't really have many here to talk about, but those are just some of my indie brands. I pretty much all have indie brands. I mean, it's not like I'm, you know, out there buying palettes from, um, like, Shiseido or who else? Estee Lauder uh, or anything like that. Uh, Tom Ford or, um, yeah. So, anyway, uh, let me know what your favorites are down below, and uh, I will see you again shortly, and take care, guys. All the best. Stay safe.